Hello, okay, uh, this is a super quick video. There are other videos about the Inspiron 12330. This one specifically focuses on upgrading the hard drive to a solid state drive, which is something that you might want to do if you've got one of these and you want to make it work better. Or um, if the driver's just, well, the existing driver's just broken or something. So it's super quick, we're going to focus entirely on that and let's get started. Now, initially, you need to remove the back stand. I've already done that to save time. There's a plastic plate, it pops off, and then you've got the screws uh, for the visa mount, which the stand fits onto. Take that off. So I've already done that, save a bit of time. Um, next thing is that there are four screws at the bottom, one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna take all of those out. It's very important you remember those, as we'll see in a minute, because if you forget them, you will break something. So you have to take the four screws out at the bottom. Tripod's getting in the way a little bit, but I'll, um, I'll work around it. So if the camera moves slightly, it's because I've knocked it when I was trying to get at the screws. There's one here as well, which I need to get at. So we'll just take that out. I'm gonna be fitting a Samsung SSD. Uh, personally, I like the Samsung ones because the Magician software allows drive cloning in a few clicks. You can do it with other drives using other software, but the Samsung Magician is particularly um, helpful. So I've done the four screws. I'll move that out of the way. So um, it's a Windows 8 machine. It's out of warranty. Um, so service tag and express service code will just say it's out of warranty. So one, two, three, four screws gone. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently grab hold of something here and just see if we can pry it open. It's a bit of a faff. We have to get the catches released. You're going to need more force than you think because you have to get these catches out. So on to this bit here is actually fixed. So I'm pushing on that very slowly and gently, but nonetheless firmly, and you can hear the catches going. And once the catches are going, we've got that because there's hinge clips at the end. So it goes in there and then down. So that's that off. That requires more force than you need. If you forget to take the screws out, you snap these off. So take the screws out. But there's only those four. There aren't any other ones. So if you looked at the back and thought, oh, where are the screws? It's those four at the bottom. Now, there are other screws here. They're different sizes, so get them in the right place. There's a plate here. So I'm gonna take that one off there. I'll put that to one side. That is an M3 screw. Although I think that doesn't refer to the screw size. I think that refers to the service manual where it says unscrew all these screws, unscrew all these screws. So there's two there, one there, and there's another two down here. I'm just putting them to one side, laying them out roughly in the shape where I take them out at. If you're worried about this sort of thing, what you can do is just take a photograph of the thing and then print it out in you know, low res, black and white. And then when you take the screw out, just put the screw in the same place on the picture. So that way you won't lose any screws. You can also use like a red felt tip pen just to circle it so they show up better. Right, so I've undone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. And then this bit here lifts off. That's substantial because the stand and the mount attached to that. So that comes off. And then what we see here is the hard drive cage. Now this one is a three and a half inch cage. Um, I've already swapped the SSD into this, but you can see the cable runs across there and that just unclips like that. And then 
for this cage, there's a screw at this top end, which I'm going to unscrew. And then when I unscrew it, the cage slides and lifts out. And that's when you unclip those cables there. So you don't need to undo any of these cables. I don't need to remove the CD drive, it just unclips. So and now you can pull that out. And that's, that's where the drive goes. Now, this is the drive here that was in it. It's a Western Digital, it's broken. Uh, lots of bad sectors. Um, a lot of the time they fit these because of the price to capacity and people when they're buying things compare numbers rather than anything else, which you would do if you don't really understand the technology. Obviously an SSD is, is significantly faster, about 10 times faster, but if you see one terabyte and you see 240 gigabytes, the one terabyte is obviously four times better, if you understand what I mean. And that happens quite a lot. So they put a mechanical drive in and after about four or five years, these break. So now, as you can see in there, the drive is sort of fixed in. I hope you can see it. It's quite a dark rainy day, but that is another problem in that all SSDs are two and a half inch and a lot of these devices came with three and a half inch drives. So what's the solution? Well, you can buy little adapters, but they often aren't designed for this sort of caddy. They're just designed for cases where it doesn't really matter where the SSD is positioned. In this particular one, the SSD has to be positioned on the right edge because that's where the hole is to fit the data and power cable in. So it has to be over and line up with that. It has to be in the same position as that. So those sort of trays aren't going to be any good. Plus you've got, um, I've taken them out. There's a little bag of, of hard drive screws with rubber grommets and they have to line up to the dips on there. Otherwise you can't fit this bit back on. So you, you can't just screw it on and, and then hope it will fit because that heavy plate won't fit back on right. So what's the solution? Well, Rather than the expense of buying a uh, an adapter, because StarTech do a nice little box which looks like this, but you put the SSD in, and it's got the you know, so it's like a caddy that's designed to make it turn it into a three and a half inch drive. Instead of doing that, you do that. Now it doesn't have to be that brand; other brands exist, but essentially it's just Velcro tape. So you've got one side that's scratchy, one side that's fluffy. It doesn't matter which side you put on, where, as long as you use. So you cut a bit off, stick it on the back so that you don't cover up the um, serial number of the SSD in case it goes wrong. Another thing you can do, obviously, is take a photograph of it before you put this on. But you only need a little bit. And then when it's on, you then push it in and line it up. And what I'll do is I'll just unplug it. It's a really stiff, really stiff thing. So I'll just unplug it and take the drive out just to show you how easy it is. So there's the drive, the drive's out. So I'll put a bit of Velcro on. I haven't covered up the serial number, but there's a little bit of Velcro on it. And so that when you put the drive in, it stays where it's put. Give it a little push down to get the, the hooks to grab and you keep your finger on it and then just attach the data cable again. It's a very stiff cable. To tell obviously you don't want things falling out in transit. And when you put it back in, you just hook that over and then line it up with its little holes and it slides in quite nicely. Fit the top ones on. But before you take things out, just take a few minutes to, to see where things have gone and what they look like before you just unscrew things. And it's just a case of putting that back together. So that's now locked in. And that doesn't have any screws protruding out so the plate fits back on. So what I'll do is I'll very quickly rebuild it, um, to keep this video as short as possible. I'll very quickly rebuild it and then we'll turn it on and see what happens, see what difference it makes.
So the screws are in, but I thought I'd just pause and start the recording again for the last bit, which is putting the case back on. So with the way the lid works, well, it's back panel, it's not a lid, uh, is you've got one, two, three, four, five, six little lips there that go in at the top. So it goes in at the top and then you just line it up and it goes down and then you press it. And everything just slots in. And I think, I think that's it. And all you've got to do is put those four screws back and that's it done. So in terms of speed, this video focuses directly on changing the SSD. Well, upgrading to SSD, not changing it. And doesn't bother with anything else because they're not really any other user serviceable parts. Because of the age of the machine, the only thing you really, this is the touchscreen one, because of the age of the machine, you don't really, that's the thing you're gonna be doing is upgrading the hard drive. Now, um, cut things short, I won't put, I won't put the stand back on, because what I've noticed is that a heavy bit of kit really. What I've noticed is an iPad box is actually exactly the right size to act as a temporary stand like that. Um, so I'll just plug things in and then I'll be back. And here we go, all plugged in. The um, thing about touch screens is they tend to be super reflective. So um, hello. Uh, I'll turn it on and this is the difference it makes. The post bit always takes about roughly the same time. That's it, making sure it can blow the fan if it needs to. Let me see what happens next. And well, that's loaded. So if you allow for the post, because the post will be the same for all boots, whether they're mechanical or solid state, fitting an SSD to one of these um, is obviously a very sensible thing to do. The only sacrifice obviously is capacity, um, but if you really need the capacity then there is a card slot on the side for SD cards. And, oh hello, because I've just turned it on. It's been unplugged for a while so it's just spotted the mouse. Oh and the keyboard. Um, so that's, um, oh hello, beep beep beep. So that's um, that's it basically. So if you've got one of these, don't bin it, don't sell it, just stick an SSD in it. And don't buy a caddy, use Velcro, and um, watch this video to um, give you the confidence and help you to actually um, know what to do to do it. Because it can be quite alarming when you look at the back of something and don't see any screw holes. Because normally you just unscrew everything and then give it a pull and see what happens. But with this one, it's actually quite nice. They'll design things to be manufactured quite easily because they sort of trundle along the production line and when it gets to the operator or the operative depending on what they call them um, they have a spec sheet and it says put this in put that in so that when you choose your options on the Dilla website that finds it works its way down to the production facility uh, so a lot of the way they're designed is for manufacturing purposes and also because when you're manufacturing so many machines you're going to get some DOAs they also um, design them with servicing and maintenance and repair in mind as well so there's there's a way to take them apart and there's a way to put them back together again and if you deviate from what the designers thought of then you're in the whole world of pain and you break stuff so um don't worry with this one it's really really easy and it probably works with all the other old ones as well i don't see why they should change particularly how they do things but anyway if you found this useful um click like um, and subscribe um and um, yeah, any comments, any questions about this, um, just stick them in the comments and I'll answer them as soon as I see them. And um, thanks for watching.